battlefield is going unmanned. Over the last two decades, we've seen unmanned aircraft, or drones, just explode in popularity. Nearly every military in the world, including non-state actors, now operate UAVs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, in some form or another. We have also seen unmanned ground vehicles begin to appear. Not many play an active combat role yet, due to the ongoing question about the morality of it, but we have seen these used extensively in a bomb disposal role. And finally, not to be left out, is unmanned naval vehicles. This includes ships, but also submarines. Research into unmanned, underwater vehicles has skyrocketed in recent years. Most of this goes unseen by the general public, and does not get much attention. But this has always been the case with underwater warfare. Unlike the big shiny fighter jets, or tough looking tanks, submarines have always been much more secretive, mostly due to the fact that they are hidden, submerged throughout the world's oceans. The submarine service, of virtually every country, often conduct the most top secret missions, collecting intelligence, deploying special forces, and occasionally breaching another nation's borders to do so. Something that, if an aircraft or ground forces did, would be tantamount to declaring war. But first, this episode's sponsor, Surfshark. We spend nearly as much time online every day as we do sleeping. While you are online, there is a multi-billion dollar industry whose sole aim is to attack and steal your information. That ranges from obvious things like credit card numbers, login and passwords, to not so obvious things like watching what websites you visit, what you are searching, what kind of devices you're using, and where you're using them. So you need to take what steps you can to protect yourself. It's absolutely vital to have a VPN. Keep yourself anonymous, get around internet censorship, and with Surfshark, block ads which slow down your internet, trackers, and malware and phishing attacks. They also have a pretty useful feature called HackLock, which scans databases of hacked emails and passwords and notifies their users. I personally had my email and password leaked in a few of the large hacks over the years. This would have been incredibly useful. I could have changed my passwords earlier. Right now, they have an offer for 83% off, $1.99 a month. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deals slash covertcabal and use my promo code covertcabal, no space, to sign up for that 83% off and you get one extra month for free. Again, that is Surfshark. These top secret missions carried out by submarines are extremely dangerous. If they are caught, the risks are tremendous, possibly resulting in the loss of hundreds of submariners, billions of dollars in equipment, and causing a major international incident, possibly even war. This is where unmanned systems excel. You risk no human operators, these systems tend to be significantly cheaper, and reactions to unmanned platforms violating a nation's border tend to be much less severe than manned vessels. This is the direction that major powers like the US, Russia, and China are heading. Like I said, the submarine service is extremely secretive, with specifications, capabilities, and even what missions they are undergoing kept completely classified. Once a sub submerges, that is it. What goes on underwater, for those not in the know, can only be assumed. So when it comes to these autonomous vehicles, often referred to as UUVs, the public is generally left in the dark, except when one is discovered by another nation. This has been happening more and more regularly. Dozens of these vehicles have been recovered, mostly by fishermen after them getting caught in fishing nets. In 2018 alone, Chinese fishing vessels caught nine UUVs. Most of these vessels are simple and cheap, also having few, if any, identifying marks, giving its operators plausible deniability. Hundreds of these UUVs can be built for the price of less than one manned submarine, offering an incredible capability that was previously impossible. Most of the UUVs we've seen are for intelligence gathering, similar to UAVs in the early days. They are relatively cheap, can be deployed easily by aircraft, ships, and even other submarines, and operated in large numbers, enabling you to collect significantly more intelligence, while greatly reducing the cost of operating and possibly losing one. The real question is just what kind of intelligence can these gather? With UAVs, you can put a camera on board, radars, and many other sensors to collect information. However, light and radar does not travel very far underwater. One method would be to use high frequency sonar. Use of typical active sonar is rarely used by submarines as it instantly alerts everyone around and gives away your position. High frequency sonar does not propagate very far, making extremely useful for mapping surrounding areas, such as the ocean floor, undersea objects, ice canopies, and even sea mines, all while remaining undetected. This can be incredibly useful for mapping out an area to detect enemy mines or charting courses, 
which could be used in the event of a war, or for navigation when inserting special forces into a hostile area. UUVs could also be equipped with manipulator arms. These can tap undersea cables, or for recovering debris, such as a piece of a missile or a torpedo after a test by another nation, or from sunken vessels or even other submarines. This is something that has been carried out in the past by manned submarines, which is extremely, extremely dangerous. During the Cold War, both superpowers tapped communication cables and attempted to collect debris from the other. Project Azorian, for example, when the US attempted to recover a sunken Soviet submarine. Also, we know that the US collected debris from Soviet missile tests along with torpedoes. These pieces were then brought back and analyzed to figure out their capabilities and possibly develop countermeasures. Even if they cannot recover the weapons directly, it can be extremely useful to listen in on communications and record telemetry during weapons tests. UUVs could be outfitted with various devices to pick up this information. Other sensors could include ESM masks, which can detect and monitor radio transmissions, and possibly even a periscope to collect images and video. Mine clearing is another use for UUVs. They enable you to not risk divers going down to disarm these devices. They can also operate for much longer, covering a much larger area in significantly less time. UUVs can also be used in an anti-submarine role. Defending carrier strike groups or naval ports from enemy submarines is one of the most difficult tasks today, especially with modern submarines being virtually silent. Currently, ASW is carried out by a mix of fixed-winged aircraft, helicopters, surface ships, and other submarines. These, however, are not available in the numbers necessary and are limited in capability and endurance to monitor the ocean 24-7. Having dozens of unmanned systems patrol an area tirelessly could be a tremendous advantage over the current manned systems. And finally, unmanned attack submarines. Large UUVs that can carry out the role of modern submarines like the Virginia and Yazin class boats. Armed with torpedoes, cruise missiles, advanced autonomous navigation and sonar systems that can operate without putting any people at risk. This would be the ultimate use of UUVs. Current state-of-the-art nuclear attack submarines are becoming extremely expensive. The latest Virginia-class boats are costing about $3.5 billion each. These rising costs means many navies cannot afford very many. Unmanned systems could be much cheaper, as you do not need accommodations for a crew. This could enable countries to build many more boats. While designs and concepts for such boats are being proposed, these are still likely far from becoming a reality. But the technology is developing quickly. The Orca, an extra-large, unmanned underwater vehicle, is currently being constructed. Orca is more of a demonstrator for now, but plans are for it to become a stepping stone toward larger UUVs armed with mines, torpedoes, cruise missiles, even other smaller UUVs it could deploy. These plans could place large UUVs in anti-ship roles, anti-submarine, land attack missions, along with intelligence gathering. Having several large UUVs armed with a dozen Tomahawk cruise missiles launch strikes instead of manned submarines and ships could be extremely valuable. During the US, British, and French strikes in Syria in 2018, Russia had made a threat that it could sink any vessel launching missiles at Syria. The USS Donald Cook destroyer we know was shadowed by Russian ships and submarines. It did not participate in the strike, but the situation was very tense. Having cruise missiles, such as Caliber and Tomahawk, launched from submerged submarines is an incredible capability. However, as soon as you launch, you are giving away your location. Now anyone nearby knows where you are. As we know, it is vital for a submarine's survival to remain hidden. Having unmanned systems could be a huge benefit and negate such a threat in the future by eliminating the risk of loss of life, extremely expensive submarines, and causing an international incident. And the US isn't the only country with these big plans. Russia has shown off a few different systems, including the harpsichord. China has also displayed a large UUV during a recent military parade. One major problem though with unmanned underwater vehicles is communication. UAVs can easily be radio controlled. However, as I mentioned, radio waves do not work well underwater. This in fact has been a long-standing problem with manned submarines, being able to communicate with them. The only good way to communicate is for the submarine to surface or release a buoy to the surface to receive and transmit information. This, however, risks exposing your position. One technology that has been rapidly advancing that could mitigate this is artificial intelligence. This can be combined with UUVs and programmed to go out and conduct a mission 
and be able to make decisions on the spot without a human in the loop. These could adapt to changing situations by themselves without risking detection. The future for UUVs is full of potential, and like UAVs, they are going to rapidly be deployed in larger and larger numbers by every nation. Hundreds are already in active service in a dozen different countries. It could eventually get to the point where they are replacing manned submarines. It will undoubtedly be a very interesting development to follow over the next few years. I want to give a quick thanks to H.I. Sutton. If you do not know who he is, go check out his website. He knows more about submarines and UUVs than I can ever hope to know in a lifetime. A few of the artwork I showed here is actually from him, so I do appreciate him letting me use it.